Toyota 4Runner. Obviously the door panel's been removed. We have another video on how to get to this point. It takes about maybe five minutes. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're actually going to show you how to install the component speakers in the front door. Uh, as you can see, you got a harness up here. You're just going to pinch the top of the harness. There's a small tab right up here. You just want to push that tab down and pull the harness out. So as you pinch, you just kind of wiggle it out and it'll come right out. Then you have four 10 millimeter bolts that are holding in the speaker. To so grab a 10 millimeter, you can use an impact or a socket wrench. The first one is going to be your door speaker harness. Now this has two leads coming out of it. As you can see, it, it snaps directly in to your stock speaker harness. We're gonna peel back some of this stock uh, plastic we're gonna put our wires through then we're gonna reach from the inside of our speaker hole and pull these out we want to stay as low as possible as to not inter to interfere with the window uh, moving up or down so just stay as low as you can as you can see now we got our two leads out here which is where we'll be connecting our speaker to so now I'm gonna crimp on the connectors now just in case if you get confused on which connector goes to which uh, wire here nine times out of ten usually the bigger connector is going to be your positive it's always good to double check on the speaker all right guys so now that we have our harness plugged into our factory harness and our two leads coming out as you can see we already have our terminals crimped on which we just did you want to make sure a that you're as low as possible when you're coming through this door panel B, you want to make sure that you only have as much wire as necessary. Six to eight inches is more than enough wire. You want to make sure that you don't have over a foot coming out to where you have a bundle of wire stuck back here. Because if the window comes down and you have too much wire back here, sometimes your window can actually snag that wire and accidentally unplug it from your speaker. So the less wire you hide in your door panel, the better. Lastly, you want to position your speaker onto the mount to where the terminals are pointed down. Like I said, for the same reason, if our wiring is plugging into the terminals pointed down, there's the wires forced to run low. Less of a chance that it's gonna interfere with your window. There we go. And make sure you wanna have them on there nice and tight. They're not gonna get loose or go anywhere. The speaker mount only goes on one way. So if the holes don't line up, just flip it upside down and align your holes. We do include 10 millimeter uh, screws to screw these in. Same thing with these, you don't want to really over tighten. Just want to make sure they're nice and snug in there. They are held in by a plastic um, anchor, so you can actually strip that out if you over tighten these. Now what I like to do from here, just to make sure that the, the speaker wire doesn't get into the way, I always like to zip tie these. So I want to explain to you guys component speakers. There seems to be a lot of confusion on this from a lot of our customers, so I'm hoping this clarifies it for you, makes it really simple. A lot of people are used to this type of speaker. This is called the coax. You have one speaker, one, you have the speaker, you have two drivers and they call it a coax because the mid-range and the tweeter share the same axis, hence a coaxial speaker. On the back we've got one connection. Most people are used to this type of connection. You plug in speaker wire, you're done. All right. On a, cro on a component set, it's a little bit more work but you get a lot more benefits. Here we've got a crossover. What the, the crossover's job is it takes the incoming signal and it filters it and it only sends the proper signal here and the proper signal here. The a really big benefit is you get to mount a tweeter up in a higher location and you get better sound quality, better imaging because your leg isn't blocking it, your knee, whatever, because you can actually put this in a higher place and it makes a huge difference in sound quality. Now, here's where a lot of people get confused. How do I wire this thing up? Well, it's actually really easy. Here we have the signal coming from your amp or your stock head unit. 
okay? So this is going in, and it even says in. So we know this is coming from the amp or head unit. The next thing is, we need to feed the signal out to these two drivers. So here under W, that's for a mid-range woofer, or a mid-range driver. So the woofer is getting this signal here. Just hook the positive and negative up. Same thing, now this one is gonna feed the signal out to the tweeter, and that's it. You've basically set up a, a passive crossover system. So let's jump over to the vehicle and get it installed. All right, so when we remove this stock tweeter, we end up with a couple challenges uh, in the Forerunner. The first one is you end up with an odd shaped hole. So installing aftermarket tweeters can be a challenge. That's where our speaker, uh, how do I say this, our tweeter adapters come into play. Let me show, let me show, show you what they look like. All right, we offer these adapters. Adapters that allow you to install aftermarket tweeters into your Forerunner. Now, we also offer these in custom sizes because most tweeters are not a standard size. A lot of people get confused, and I want to go over this real quick because this question comes up so much. A lot of people read that their tweeter is a one inch tweeter and they order these at, at, um, cut out to one inch. What they're talking about on tweeters, aftermarket tweeters, are the front of the tweeter, not the back. Generally, the mounting diameter, I hope you can see this, is much larger than one inch. I rare, We rarely see tweeters that are one inch. So we offer prepackaged uh, component systems on our website, or if you decide to get your own, make sure you look up the manufacturer and get the mounting diameter, not the size of the actual tweeter itself. You need to look at the mounting diameter. Okay, wanted to cover that because that question comes up a whole bunch. All right, so our first challenge overcome. We can we can install aftermarket tweeters. Here we're going to be installing this set of this set of tweeters here. Notice it's already attached, not going anywhere. We can just bolt this in, and we're going to show you how to get this all connected. All right. So when I remove this speaker or this tweeter from this harness here, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's four speaker four wires running to this one speaker, and the reason for that is Toyota wired this speaker and your front door speaker in parallel. In short, all that means is, or the biggest problem is, is when you unplug this, your front door speaker stops working. So in the past, you would either have to cut these and splice them together, or again, we offer, I think you can see it, these um, tweeter harness adapters. Basically, you take this, plug it in, I think you can see that in the video, and then now we've got 36 inches of wire that, that we're gonna use to feed our aftermarket speakers. All right guys, so here you're looking at a close-up of the tweeter wire harness. Here we're, uh, we're inside this Forerunner, and for the sake of this video, we labeled these this uh, connector. One, two, three, and four. Number one is obviously your positive, two is another positive, three and four are negatives. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna tape the other end of these wires with one, two, three, and four to match these corresponding wires. Now. Um, what I want to make clear is, again, we don't label the actual harness, I just want to show this to you in the video. But it's easy to tell, number one is obviously the red, number two is red, three and four are negative. On the right hand side of this harness, you can see it's a little bit larger than it is on the left. So basically all you're going to do is copy what we're doing here. You're going to put a label on each of these wires and now we're going to go outside the truck and we're going to show you how to get these wired on the actual component set. Alright guys. So here we're looking at the other side of the wires we labeled. So here we've got uh, wire number one, wire number two, wire number three, and wire number four. So remember, on the when you're looking at the wires on the uh, the, the which one do I call it? The tweeter harness adapter. Remember how we numbered them? These are the corresponding numbers. So we're actually going to show you where these go. So numbers one and three are going to plug here into the crossover positive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So remember numbers one. Number one is the red is positive. Number three, negative. Then I'm going to take two and four, and these are going to go here to the W. Pin number one. 
pin number three, pin number two, and pin number four. Plug in your tweeter and you're done. Okay. So, at this point, what I like to do is tape them all together. At this time, we're going to go ahead and put on uh, some, some B splices to crimp together our tweeter wire to our tweeter uh, jumper that's going to the crossover. We'll do that now. You have a copper wire and a silver wire. Usually in this occasion, when you're working with tweeters, your copper wire is going to be your positive and your silver wire is going to be your negative. So we'll just take our silver and put it into the black uh, splice here and we'll crimp that together, silver to black, and then we'll crimp together our copper to red. So really same thing with the, uh, with the door speaker mounts. If you put it in and the holes don't line up, just twist it around and you'll line up okay so now that we have our tweeter wired in we've got our speaker wired in and mounted last but not least we're going to wire up our crossover here's a shot of underneath the um the dash on the driver's side of this Toyota 4Runner. I just wanted to show you here exactly where our power wire is coming in from the firewall. We have our crossover hidden behind here, which is right underneath your grommet where your other factory wiring is going into. It actually just tucks right in there pretty easily and it allows for the kick panel to be placed back over without interfering with any of your pedals or any of the stock wiring. 